I'm a lion. Hello, children. My name is Banana Neil, and today I'm going to teach you something. Why, you ask? Because the Vlog Brothers have been doing a whole week of educational videos, and I decided I was going to do an educational video because I like learning, and I imagine you do too. Rawr. Now, about a year and a half ago, I took Calculus 1, and my teacher was explaining to us the fundamental theorem of calculus. Of course, being the little academic I was, I raised my hand and asked why it works. And he looked at me and he said, you want me to prove the fundamental theorem of calculus? I don't think I can do that. He ended up giving a very like simplistic overview of why it might be happening, but I don't think he really knew. And now because I think about things in the shower constantly, I ended up coming up with my own proof of the fundamental theorem of calculus, which I think is actually pretty cool and pretty amazingly awesome and stuff. Stuffs, which is what I'm going to teach you today. Okay, so let's start off basic. In math, we have these things called numbers. Now, numbers are essentially quantitative values that we can apply to pretty much anything that range from negative infinity to positive infinity. That is, real numbers. Stay with me. In math, we also have these things called graphs. Now, graphs are a physical representation of input values going through a function and resulting in an output value. Two-dimensional graphs often have two values, the horizontal value and the vertical value, or x value and y value, and they're often used to plot functions. Functions are super awesome, spectacular, and amazing, why, you ask? Because they can be used to model pretty much anything in the world. Well, most things. Regardless, graphically analyzing functions can often result in a further understanding of how things work or why things work or what is happening when things work. Or something like that. Rawr! Now, looking at graphs, one might start to wonder what would happen if we looked at not only the height of the function at any given point, but the slope of the function at any given point. That is, the direction of change and the rate of change of any point on a graph at any given moment in time. Fancy, right? Turns out using calculus, we can actually derive these functions and find their derivatives. Amazing, I know. Now, the derivative of functions can actually be graphed, and so you can start to have functions whose height is representative of the slope of other functions. This is when it gets magical. So we have graph A and we have graph B. Now, graph B is the derivative of graph A. That is to say that at any given point on graph A, you can find the slope by looking at the height of graph B. Don't get confused, it's okay. In fact, something that's often more interesting to engineers and mathematicians is the opposite, saying that the slope at any given point on graph B is the height of graph A. And that means that graph A is what's called the integrated function of graph B. Hold on to that thought, we're going to come back to it in a second. Because I feel like I should probably tell you what the fundamental theorem of calculus really is. Now there's actually many different parts of the fundamental theorem of calculus, but I'm going to prove to you all the part that says the area underneath the graph on a given interval is equivalent to the difference in height on the integrated graph. For example, if I had the super fantastic function whose graph looks like this, the area underneath this portion of the graph is equal to the height of the second point of the interval minus the height of the first point of the interval on the integrated graph. Just looks like that. So let's prove it. So a moment ago, if you recall, I mentioned the existence of two graphs, graph A and graph B, where B is the graph of the derivative of the function of graph A, and more importantly for our proof, graph A is the integrated function of graph B. Now, according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, this interval on graph B is equivalent to the difference in height of the same interval on graph A, correct? Let's take a step back for a second, back to geometry, when you learn that area is height times base of a two-dimensional rectangular object. So essentially to find the area of this portion of graph B, we need to multiply the height by the base. And as you might have Realize as the height is kind of fluctuating, that becomes difficult. But if we were to have, say, the average height of graph B, we can multiply that average height by the width and get the area. So let me ask you something. How do you find the average height of a function on a given interval? Magic. I love magic. So what we're going to do, because we have a graph whose slope is representative of the height of graph B, we're going to find the average slope of graph A and multiply it by the interval of graph B. With me so far? So if you look at graph A and you try to figure out what the average slope is on a given interval, we have to go back and remember what slope is. Slope is rise over run. So on graph A, if you want to go up from the first point to the second point, you take the second point minus the first point and we're gonna divide it by the given interval. So right now we have an average slope of graph A. And because the slope of graph A is representative of the height of graph B, we now have an average height on that given interval. And by the magic of algebra, multiplying the slope of the given interval by the height difference of graph A divided by the slope of the given interval just results in the height difference of graph A. I just blew your mind. Rawr. So to recap what I just did, if you ever have a graph which you want to know the area beneath the curve but above the x-axis, or below the x-axis if you want to get specifics, you take the height difference on the integrated graph of that given interval, divide it by the given interval, and multiply it by the interval again, and you get magically the height difference on the integrated graph is equivalent to the area on the non-integrated graph. It's amazing, isn't it? <sighs> I love math. 
Have I ever told you guys how much I love math? Because I love math. Almost as much as the interwebs. Rawr. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you want to teach your friends about mathematical things, you can send this to them. If you are currently thinking about sending this to someone, you should be my friend. Because I really want to be friends with people who have really nerdy friends. <laughs> if you have any questions or thoughts or anything like that, you can definitely email them to me at bananalittlegmail.com or leave them in the comment below. Wow, that sentence just ended in horribleness. I am a lion. Rawr. Bye!